Hi, I'm Daz. This is a uh, another tape recorder I've picked up from uh, Radio Rally. Um, this one's made by Cossor, and it's a CR 1603A. The lid's an interesting design. You sort of push it forward to take it off. Interesting transport controls. Start, stop, fast forward, rewind. It's a small meter there. Track control, one, four, two, and three. Record button with no interlock. Um, what else is the well, that's about it really on the front uh, top here. Uh, it's mono. Let's have a look what sockets we've got. Just trying to find it. Yes, that's good. Um, interesting proprietary type connector. It's a couple of dins. I think that's what's known as a diode socket. It looks slightly damaged. Microphone. Not sure what that is. There's an earth and there's a speaker output on the side. Next thing I'm going to do is uh, take the lid off and have a have a look. But I know I'm going to need some rubber feet. The looks of it. They look rather perished. It's mains cord in here. Oh, and a voltage selector as well. So that can obviously run on many different voltages. And the cable's so crammed in here it's hard to get it back on. There we go. Right, time to get the lid off I think and just see what state it is inside and whether I can do anything with it. Okay, so I've got the cover off the top so I can have just a look at the mechanism to see where we are. I can see some rubber parts have perished quite badly already. So the pinch wheel seems uh, not too bad. It's there's some elasticity in that. Um, looking at play, so that is the idler. So it's slipping. Well, it's supposed to, I guess, because it's a take-up spool. That's good. Um, I think it's fast forward and rewind that's got the problem. This shaft, which I guess is connected to the motor, um, I can zoom in. There we go. I don't know if you can see, but the rubber's come off the uh, the, in the metal. So. You can see it's a bit lump, 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 lump. I guess, I guess perhaps if you get a small flat belt and glue that in position, maybe that could be repaired. So put it in fast rewind. And again, you can, yeah, you can see that, uh, zoom out a bit, you can see the, the idler gear is sort of lumping. Okay so that rubber bit um, around this shaft is going to need replacing. It's a little bit I noticed this this here is a little bit a little bit of softness here as well. Um, zoom out a little bit. Yeah okay so I think I think that could be repaired. Just looking at the circuit diagram in my radio and television book, that is for the 1603, not the 1603A, so I assume it's similar. It's uh, three and three quarters inches per second, and it takes five and three quarter inch spools, so that's that. Um, these look like the main smoothing caps, and they're leaking. It's a motor and it's a transformer as well. There's a belt from the 
motor here. It's very, very loose. Got a little brush to clean it. Um, there's two pulleys on here, so it can work 50, 60 hertz. This doesn't like turning upside down, I don't think. Here's that uh, rubber wheel that we could see on the other side, so that should come off for recovering. So that's uh, quite handy. There's the voltage switch. Here's the circuit board. There's a switch on there. There's also another leaf switch, and I'm not sure what that's for at the moment, but uh, you can slide the speaker out, which is kind of handy um, for accessibility. Um, see the screening can over the top. So that's the main parts of this machine. Just looking inside the cosser, there's a little bit of cracking on the flywheel, but I don't think it's serious at the moment. This is the uh, idler wheel for fast forward and rewind. It rubber's worse for the wear, and uh, yeah, that's got some cracking as well. Just working on this idler wheel, I've put a O-ring on it, and I'm hoping that'll do the job. Got the flywheel out at the moment, and if you look carefully, I can get it in focus. You can see there's a little clutch there, so this slips this um, piece of metal here, and that engages with. If I can get that into shot, I don't know if you can see it. There's a there's the rubber wheel for the take up is just there so that's what that metal bit where the clutch is. I've never seen the take up clutch on the um, flywheel before but then I haven't worked on that many tape recorders. Just take a shot. Yeah the capacitors look like they want replacing. The rubber has perished and it looks like electrolyte may have been leaking out. I'm just cleaning everything up at the moment. I've removed the motor from the tape recorder and took the armature out just so I can give it a good clean. It's got phosphor bronze bearings I guess and there's a little uh, hole there to soak the pad and uh, what I wasn't expecting is uh, it actually has a ball bearing at the back. Obviously I've marked which way the motor goes though in this case with it having a fuse holder on the back it isn't too difficult to guess which way it goes but if you assemble the motor backwards it'll go backwards which is uh, kind of interesting. I've taken the circuit board off to get access to some other parts. Very very interesting circuit. According to the circuit diagram this is a AC107. Very very small package and that preset is to adjust its bias there's some more conventional OC75 type transistors. Um, let's record playback switch at the top. That's the driver transformer. There's two output transistors. Now this is interesting. Um, it's actually got capacitive coupling on the push-pull output. There's the capacitor. But it also has an auto transformer on the output. So I don't think I've ever seen that before, where you've got a ca capacitive output on a push-pull and then an auto transformer on it, so that's a bit different. And there's the uh, BIOS oscillator transformer just there in the centre. So yeah, it looks a little bit different to what I've seen before, most definitely. This is the supply uh, table I've just taken off. And there's a little bit of felt in there, presumably to give a little bit of back tension uh, when in playback. But there's no way of engaging or disengaging that, so I assume it's on permanently. This is my first power up. The um, amplifier electronics are not powered because I've taken the fuse out on the secondary. I'm just hoping now that. Uh, 
this replacement um, o-ring it's not flat but I'm hoping that I'll get adequate grip and everything will be okay for me to pr proceed and this control is the opposite way round so this is going to confuse me right yes that's rewind oh yes that's uh, that's pretty good ow <laughs> okay now fast forward ow ouch yeah what's actually happening yeah I'm stalling the flywheel I haven't got a new belt yet I'm gonna to have to order that that's good so that looks good now I'm gonna try play okay um, I've cleaned up the rubber wheels gently I haven't used anything harsh yet because I think they're still quite good so if I stall that the question will be is let's have a look at this uh, if I can get a shot, yes, there's that clutch. Just see above the spring, is it stopping? Yes, it stops when I put my hand on the take up reel, so that means it's not slipping enough, it's actually slipping where it should be, and that's on that clutch. Let's see if I can get a better shot of that. There we go. Is it going to focus? No, probably on the spring, but never mind. Yes, you can clearly see it's clutch is slipping. Oh, that's good. I'm quite pleased about that. I think that means um, this is going to work sufficiently well for me to keep proceeding now. I've replaced the two main smoothing capacitors, which were 800 microfarad with 1000 microfarad parts. So that was the nearest I had. It's not too much higher and shouldn't put too much strain on the rectifier. What I've decided to do is as I've got nice access to the um, transformer via this fuse holder, I've decided I've measured the AC from the um, transformer stroke motor. It's about 15 volts, so probably around about no more than 20 volts DC. So what I've decided to do is clip the DC on across the fuse holder. The power will flow through the windings it's not a problem because I'm not going to be applying the mains. Um, so I'm going to, it, it will mean it'll be a bit safer for me to work with it um, as regards not having mains supplied. And secondly, I can bring the voltage up nice and slowly with the power supply and just see if I can reform the other capacitors um, in the tape recorder um, so I can do some tests. So I'm going to gradually bring up the power supply voltage again and uh, just let it sit and hopefully start to reform the capacitors obviously I've got to overcome the metal rectifier but I'm going to monitor the voltage across the moving caps interesting I've been flicking the track selector switch and I noticed that when I did so, the voltage was going up and down. And I thought, hmm, why can't I hear nothing from the loudspeaker? Looking at the circuit diagram, if we can just refocus, there's a, a socket here for a loudspeaker. And what I did was, I just poked a small piece of plastic in to operate the switch on and off. And now, I can hear a click from the speaker intermittently so yeah that's one thing to check isn't it because I, I guess when I check this out I'm going to find the contacts are pretty corroded on the uh, loudspeaker switch I should have looked at that before I put the board back in but never mind okay so I've got the supply voltage up to more or less what I'd expect it to be now and you can you hear that lovely bit of hiss there I don't know if it's because the transistors are noisy, but I've got a feeling that's probably like what it was from new, to be honest. Germanium R is a little bit noisy. So if I touch my finger on the head, oh, that looks good. Nice bit of cone movement there. That's good. So the amplifier's working. I'm now going to try and attempt to put it into record mode. Um, no, I think I need two hands for this one. 
Okay, so I've managed to get it into record mode. Got a piece of wire in the microphone socket. That looks promising. Although, I would say, with it at 9, I would expect that to be a little bit higher than that. In fact, I'd expect it to be off the end. But I'm wondering, uh, let's try it a little higher. Unless the meter's sticking. Hmm. Okay, that's good. So I now know when I put the fuse in and run it off AC, it's not going to explode into uh, lots of flames. Yeah, it's drawing about 60 milliamp with it in record mode. Take it out of record mode. That's now about 50 milliamps. Well, that's interesting. When it's in standby, it's 50 milliamps, and when the play button's down, it's about 30. Hmm, interesting. Okay, that's good. Things are turning round and I've heard music reproduce, which is good. I've obviously turned it down because I haven't got any copyright free music, so I've turned the volume down. But what's happening is there's a little bit of riding going on and the audio fades in and out. And I've just realised, um, looking closely, that on the left here is a pressure pad and it has unfortunately disappeared. So that's probably why there isn't enough back tension on and the tape's slightly riding and obviously the audio is fading as it rides over the head. So I'm going to need to um, replace that bit of felt there. Made some repairs to the Cossor now. Um, the felt pad, back tension pad. Now glued a new felt pad on. Notice some tape spillage so I've glued on two new pieces of cork and while I was at it I used a little bit of 400 grit sandpaper and just roughened the surface a little bit on the spool tables and that seems to uh, have completely eliminated the uh, problem with the uh, tape spillage now so that's good um, next problem I've got to solve is this set of contacts here they don't quite change over because this uh, spring seems to have become weak so it's not muting the amplifier rather than try and bend the metal uh, back and risk snapping it I decided to glue a small piece of cardboard onto the piece of metal and now the Contacts they now appear to be operating correctly, so that's good. That's that one solved anyway. Um, I've got the new drive belt on as well, and uh, it's a little thicker than the old one, but seems to work reasonably well. I can stall the motor, so that's um, a good fit, a good guess. I had to grab a belt to the nearest size, but uh, no, no, that looks good. So I'm still working on the uh, problem of fast forward and rewind on this Cossor. Um, I think the issue is, um, it's that idler wheel. Because it's got uh, a cracked uh, um, base, because it's the pot metal is cracked, it means that the drive is very, very uneven in fast forward and rewind and I think it probably won't cause a problem but it certainly does the tape here is jumping all over the place um, and it's not fantastic in rewind either I think you can probably see that more clearly from ooh I don't like that um, problems with the felt pad as well um, yeah I think uh, need to have a little bit of a look at this and a bit of a rethink this is just not very good at all after much experimenting I decided to try a little bit of, of um, clear tape over the top of the felt I was sort of thinking 8-track cartridge there, um, 
like the pads you find in an 8-track cartridge. This is the uh, tape I use, it's quite thick. Um, well that seems to give quite good uh, performance, it's quite smooth the tape now and uh, the rewind is just about acceptable. Right, let's try rewind. Yeah, it's a little bit of vibration there, but I think I'm going to have to accept with this one that this is about as good as it's going to get. Another little problem to solve is these feet. Um, the rubber has thoroughly, well, completely gone hard. Yeah, so I've just got to come up with something to substitute here on these feet. Oh, that has gone really hard. Okay, time for some tests, just to see how we're getting on back together um, I found some rubber grommets to fit the uh, go in place of the feet that are deteriorated um, let's see how we get on let's put into record mode and make a test recording testing testing one two three testing testing one two three testing testing one two three this is the Cosor 1603 a. End of test. Testing, testing, one, two, three. Testing, testing, one, two, three. Testing, testing, one, two, three. This is the Cosor 1603 A. End of test. Okay, so the fast forward and rewind is not perfect um, due to the uh, the big idler wheel having pot metal rot and of course it's split. But um, it play back, plays back fairly well. There's a fair bit of bass there, so it's not too bad. So it's not a bad repair, not uh, up to um, full factory spec, but um, definitely more workable than it was before we started. Thanks for watching.